learning at the intersection of AI, physiology, EEG, our environment, and well-being. So without further ado, please take it away. Uh, we use this mic? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Uh, lovely. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thanks very much for having us here. So my name is Ahmed. I'm from a research team at the National Institute of Education that's focused on helping learners design their own uh, inquiry experiments into the learning more about their local environment you, from the perspectives of maker culture and citizen science. So Min Tuan is a student who has been since 2021 working on a very interesting project where he's actually investigating the impact of our local microclimate on human health using a variety of sensor devices which he and his partner have designed by themselves. Oh, good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's having a good day. So my name is Tuan, and I'll be presenting to you guys about the Left to Well project. Uh, so this is a study about the environment, physiology, and EEG. So do, uh, do anyone of you know what is, a, 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 what is microclimate? If not right, then microclimate is the climate of a very small or restricted area, and it affects humans in their physiological well-being. Uh, for example, mood concentration and thermal comfort. And the diagram to the left really shows how the diagram of the gears really shows the uh, our relationship or uh, the correlations between the environment uh, as well as uh, our physical, physical and mental health. And in the past, as well as uh, recently, there has been a lot of research. Um, on the correlations between the environment and our health. And there has also been a rising popularity in this research. So you may, uh, you may be asking, what's the value add of our research then? So our research really focused on another approach, which is the citizen science approach. So uh, we focus on primarily on three areas, uh, physiology, environment, and electroencephalography, which is EEG. So for physiology, we used uh, smartwatches such as Fitbit and Huawei to collect um, biometric data such as heart rate, uh, oxygen saturation, uh, uh, blood oxygen saturation, and as well as body temperature. For our environmental device, we assembled it ourselves uh, using a different sensor and it can measure noise, light, temperature, humidity, pressure, CO2, and dust concentration. Uh, and finally, for EEG, this one, we mm. took it a step further. And as you can see, uh, to the little uh, image to uh, your right, we actually assemble it with sponges and tapes. Mm. And we only, make, uh, we only buy uh, the uh, dry out sensors as well as the Saturn board <clears throat> to measure our EEG data. Okay, so uh, this to the bottom top, uh, the bottom left part, uh, the top left part is an image of our own uh, environmental sensors, and those, that is a schema of uh, the different sensors that we use. And the image to the uh, top right is actually uh, the EEG headset that we assemble ourselves. Now, so after we have collected data, how do we analyze the relationship then? We use machine learning models. Uh, for so for uh, the relationship between uh, biometric data and the environmental data, we use a random forest regression model. And for uh, the relationship between EEG environmental and EEG and biometric data, we use deep learning models. So these are the different features that we extract from the EEG, which I will not go into detail because time is very limited. Okay, so you may be wondering. Uh, we, if we use our own uh, EEG headset that is assembled from sponge tapes and elastic bands, it is quite unreliable. So how do we make sure that the data covered is actually useful and meaningful so that we can um, uh, further investigate the different relationships between our uh, between EEG and environment, so EEG and biometric? So we came up with our own analysis and validation of EEG data, and the plan is as such. And we actually carried it out, and these are the results of the NOVA test, uh, which is quite congruent. So the advice we use to compare it with is the Ant Neuro EEG headset. Uh, we use three different uh, ways to validate, which is visual statistics and classifications. 
Here's a, uh, here are the results of validation. Um, ANOVA. Uh, these are the topology uh, heat maps of the ad neural and the DIY EG headset. Random forest classification. Okay, so these are all the results of validation and they are very congruent. Okay, so I will now talk about the results. So this is until the beginning of uh, June last year, we have collected more than uh, 100,000 data points, which included 20,000 EG windows, and the data from these microclimate devices and smartwatch are shown at the table below. So now for the relationship between the environment and our uh, biometric uh, data. So uh, for the interest of time, I'll just explain one example, one of the findings that we have found. So this is a Shapley summary plot, which we use to um, interpret the results of the uh, of our regression model. So for carbon dioxide, uh, uh, for heart rate, we found out that uh, they are affected the most by carbon dioxide concentration, ambient sound, and ambient temperature. And the extent of which it affects heart rate can be seen as such. So overall, well, we found out that the most significant microclimatic factors are dust concentration, carbon dioxide concentration, ambient noise, and temperature. These are for the heart rate and EG. This is uh, what EG data suggests about heart rate. And as you can see, these are different features that affect our heart rate. Also for CNN models, uh, these are the saliency maps for um, the prediction of CNN about our EG heart rate. Uh, uh, yeah, of EG about our heart rate. Okay, so what is so meaningful about this? Well, we found out that this can be used to integrate into the ecosystem of smart homes, uh, personal health devices, as well as to improve students' life satisfaction and productivity. And it can be used in case studies to also improve productivity and attentiveness in many cases. And we hope that this can speed up the process of democratizing uh, environmental knowledge to the mass, where we can be better aware of how the environment affects us. And uh, in turn, it can really help the government to implement more green policies and uh, with our obedience, more obedience from the mass. So this is our references. Right. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minton. Does anyone have any questions? Yep. Oh, I was just wondering, what's been the most challenging part of working on the project? <laughs> okay, so I think one of the more challenging aspect is that this is a, actually a, a multidisciplinary study. And since we are only, so me and my partner, we, at that point in time, we are only secondary student. So we didn't have much expertise and resources in terms of how to approach this as well as how we can uh, make our, our we can turn our vision into a real product as well as a real study. So actually, what we did is that we reached out to many professionals and we asked our professors to connect us with them so that we can learn more about them. And I think the more challenging part is actually persevere through the mistakes because these are actually very complicated schemas as well as designs that we need to constantly review and renovate after every iterations of a collection of data. So I think yeah, that's the challenging part because we didn't have uh, enough expertise to really uh, function this project on our own. All right, thank you. Next question. Yeah, so what was your main motivation in like starting this project? <laughs> thank you for thank you for the question. Okay, so uh, I, me and my partner, we were both students from Vietnam. And so when we came to Singapore, we uh, realized that somehow all the allergies that we, re uh, we had uh, as a result of like climate has, has been like magically cured. So we were wondering what happened to, what, what happened, like what's the reason behind that? Because it's quite interesting as well. Uh, in our opinion. And then at the same time, we feel like we can do something meaningful and contribute back to the community. Why? Because we think uh, these are um, the, uh, the, citizen, the citizen science approach is not really a approach that 
is very popular and actually it can be very beneficial because we can actually motivate others to follow our footsteps as well. So I think uh, that's like a double benefit that motivated us to actually carry out this project. Right, thank you. We have time for one last question. Yeah, so on that point about um, um, iterating and areas to go, you may have flashed it, but I may have missed it. Uh, were this, these sensors mostly in HDBs, condos, the CBD? Like, where's the makeup of where you're collecting samples? And then on top of that, then, if you, were to, if you did, if resources were to constrain, time were to constrain, what other areas would you want to expand out to or collect data from? Okay, so for the collection of data, we actually, this was only conducted on students so basically i asked my friends and my peers to wear these devices when we uh, went to the same school so basically we try to mitigate the pattern of data collection such that the area where each of the participants uh went through during their day or their activities are quite the same so we kind of limit it so that we can eliminate those uh outliers and in terms of expansion of um, data collection as well as our future planning, we are planning to integrate another type of data that is less intrusive than EG data, which is uh, electrodermal activity. So uh, we're trying to find, uh, we have actually assembled our sensor, but then we, again, we need to validate this because it, it's again made from very um, low cost and as well as they are, in a way they are very, they're kind of different from uh, research grade equipment. So we need further uh, further validation on that to prove that it's actually working. And so then we can integrate this into our overall models and of investigate more about how these factors are related to each other.